From its origin in the beautiful Rocky Mountain high country of north-central Colorado, to its terminus in the Colorado River Delta in Mexico, the 1,450-mile-long Colorado River is a vital natural resource and a national treasure. Its journey west and south carries it through towering mountains, thick forests, deep canyons, expansive valleys, and remote deserts. This waterway is fed by the massive Colorado River Basin, an approximately 246,000 square mile watershed. The upper basin includes portions of Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. The lower basin encompasses parts of Arizona, Nevada, and California in the United States, and Sonora and Baja in Mexico. An average of approximately 15 million acre-feet of water flows through the Colorado River annually. It's a critical water resource serving municipalities, tribes, and agriculture in the arid southwest and the upper basin states. Nearly 40 million people depend on the Colorado River and its tributaries. A wide range of non-agricultural users consume approximately 25% of the U.S. allocation of the river's water for domestic, commercial, and industrial purposes. A key quality of life resource, these supplies not only allow existing populations and economies to thrive, but have been instrumental in supporting the region's rapid growth over the past several decades. The Colorado River is an essential water supply for Southern California and the lifeblood of our communities, especially during times of drought. The irrigation of roughly five and a half million acres of some of the nation's most highly productive agricultural lands is the primary use for the remaining 75% of the U.S. allocation. Farming and ranching in and around the basin produces some 15% of our nation's crops and roughly 13% of our livestock. These enterprises generate billions of dollars in economic benefits annually. But it's not all about people and money. The Colorado also supplies some of our nation's most precious, preserved, and protected lands. Four national recreation areas, 11 national parks, and seven national wildlife refuges depend on its continued bounty for their health and maintenance. With so much and so many dependent on the continued health of the Colorado River and its flows, it should be clear that maintaining the quality of its waters is a top priority for all of its users. And one of the most important considerations regarding the river's water quality is its salinity. When most of us think of salt water, we think of the world's oceans, where salts are an obvious ingredient. But salts are present in all of the Earth's natural waters. It's just a question of concentrations. A pristine high mountain stream may contain as little as 50 parts per million, or ppm, of salt. In comparison, the salt in ocean water averages closer to 35,000 ppm. The salts we're talking about here are not just the familiar sodium chloride of dinner table fame, but a whole host of dissolved solids including carbonates, chlorides, and sulfates of calcium, magnesium, and sodium. As the Colorado River flows down from the Rockies and southwest to the Mexican border, the concentration of these salts continually increases from about 50 ppm to roughly 850 ppm. High levels of salt compounds in our freshwater supplies are a serious problem. They generate negative environmental impacts and cause economic damages, especially to downstream lower basin water users. Reduced crop yields, increased water treatment costs, plugged pipes, damaged equipment, and degraded river health are a few of the negative impacts. The U.S. Bureau of Reclamation estimates the quantified damages to U.S. users to be $300 to $400 million per year. And if not for salinity control measures, these costs would be nearly double. Increased salinity in the Colorado River lowers crop yields, increases management costs, and limits the types of crops we can grow. The Colorado River flows through lands that were once covered by ancient seas, which left behind highly saline sediments. As measured at Hoover Dam, 
About half of the salt concentration in the Colorado River comes from natural sources, such as flows from saline springs and seeps, and the erosion of these saline soils. Human activity generates the other half through irrigation runoff and wastewater discharge. As this animation illustrates, irrigation flows result in the leaching of salts from soils through deep percolation. This process, in connection with groundwater flow and discharge into the river, results in the greatest single category of human-caused salt loading on the river. Unconsumed farm irrigation water, which flows through saline soils, picks up salts and carries them into the Colorado River or its tributaries. The Colorado River Salinity Control Act of 1974 mandates the implementation of control programs to reduce the salinity of the Colorado River. Title II of this act created the Colorado River Basin Salinity Control Program. This unique effort focuses on improving the Colorado River's water quality for U.S. users. Partnered in this effort are the Federal Government's Bureau of Reclamation, Natural Resources Conservation Service, Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Geological Survey, Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Environmental Protection Agency. The seven basin states working collectively as the Colorado River Basin Salinity Control Forum and hundreds of water districts, water user organizations, canal and ditch companies, along with thousands of individual water users and producers. The Colorado River Salinity Control Program primarily implements two different improvement strategies. Off-farm irrigation water delivery improvements, such as canal lining, or piping for ditches, are implemented through the Bureau of Reclamation's basin-wide program and on-farm irrigation improvement practices are implemented through the Natural Resources Conservation Services Environmental Quality Incentives Program, or EQIP. This program provides assistance to landowners who implement water efficiency improvement practices such as sprinklers, which reduce runoff, deep percolation, and the leaching of salts into the Colorado. Additional salinity control is achieved through capture and disposal of naturally occurring saline springs and seeps, implemented by both federal and state agencies. The plugging of abandoned oil and gas wells, BLM management practices on federal lands, and the administration of National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System permits by the states to ensure compliance with salinity standards, as mandated by the Federal Clean Water Act. All of these efforts are focused on preventing additional salts from reaching the Colorado River. The successes of the Colorado River Salinity Control Program and its partners should be recognized and celebrated. This unique group of federal, state, municipal, and private interests has worked in close cooperation for more than 40 years. Through their efforts, the salt load of the Colorado River has been reduced by approximately 1.3 million tons annually. This has been accomplished while allowing continued development and water usage in the basin, and while operating within federally mandated salinity standards. The irrigation improvements provided through the salinity programs have enabled me to be a better steward of the land, increased crop production, benefited our community, and helped to improve the quality of water in the Colorado River. This lowered salt load has resulted in millions of dollars in reduced cost to users, improved ecosystems, and better water quality. Implementation of the Colorado River Basin Salinity Control Program has been cost-effective and highly successful while benefiting tens of millions of water users. And continued aggressive implementation of the program is vital as demands for this water continue to increase. Despite the control program's impressive accomplishments, the economic damages to U.S. users from high Colorado River salinity levels are still approximately $300 to $400 million per year. And with continued usage and development of the river's waters, projections for 2035 
show that these damages could nearly double unless the Colorado River Salinity Control Program is fully funded and consistently supported. The Colorado River is a majestic national asset that often evokes feelings of awe and wonder. Year in and year out, its waters serve tens of millions of people, support vast natural environments, and enable billions of dollars in commerce. But we must take steps to manage and protect the river's quality to ensure a thriving basin through the 21st century and beyond.